Hi, welcome back to in Introduction to Engineering Design. Today we're going to talk about some more SOLIDWORKS features, and this time let's talk about a file association. Uh, so what we have is our sample cube that we've been working on, if you've watched me construct. The sample cube is put together in what's called an assembly. That assembly consists of five separate parts. Uh, each one of these parts, piece one, two, three, four, five, have attributes that are built into the file that comprises that part. The assembly file really just tells SOLIDWORKS how to put it together via what mates, in addition to any other configurations. As an example, I have a I have a uh, exploded view. And it relies on a file association that existed at the time of construction. So I recommend to all the students, and I myself, have put all of these files into a single folder that's based on the project. So I've got an assembly, and I've got the five pieces. This may or may not be true for your project, but it doesn't really matter. Because what we're going to do to move this, we're going to use a feature called Pack and Go. So let's say the instructor asks you to turn in your complete design. Your complete design would consist of the assembly, it may consist of some other drawings, it may consist of, or will consist of, the parts that were used within that assembly, and perhaps some other files, like maybe sketches, a PDF of a sketch, or something like that. So Pack and Go is a great way to combine all of those files. So the way I'd like you to use it on the puzzle cube is I'd like you to have your puzzle cube open, and that really be the only thing that's open. And the puzzle cube assembly is what we're looking for. So the Puzzle Cube Assembly, up here in the File menu, the very top, if I click on that and I drop down and I come all the way down to Pack and Go, about midway down your screen. Click on that and it will open another menu. And as you look at this menu, you've got several checkboxes to categorically include items. And if I had a Drawings to include, I would click there. And I've also got individual selections, so I can elect to select or deselect specific items. Maybe I'm not using them or there's some other reason. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to elect to save it to a zip file. So what I want to do is come back out, put it on my desktop, and I want to call this ID Puzzle. So I've given the, the uh, zip file a name that I can find later on, and it tells me that within this package, the zip file, I'll put one assembly, five parts, no drawings, no other files, for a total of six files in that zip file. Now other drawings, there are several examples, maybe spreadsheets, they may or may not be linked to uh, actions within SOLIDWORKS, or perhaps a scan, or a picture, or something that uh, was used as you developed your design and you created your parts and then the associated assembly. So for now we don't have any of that. Let's go ahead and click Save and you'll see it goes really quick. It just zipped that file together and let me bring that file over. So here's my IED puzzle zip file. If I open that You'll see that within that zip file, I've got a little bit of compression, but I, more importantly, I have all of the pieces to reassemble that assembly. Now that zip file is what you'd turn in for the assignment. It's also a convenient way for you to save it and transfer it uh, as a single file versus a folder full of files. So that is the Pack and Go feature within SOLIDWORKS, great way to turn products in for assessment and also to uh, retain and move them around if you're not using some kind of a server uh, basis to do that. So that was Introduction to Engineering Design, SOLIDWORKS tutorial on the Pack and Go feature. Thanks.